It could be any afternoon at a bison playground somewhere on the prairies. Baby buffalo running around, challenging each other, imitating grown-ups. Or baby gorillas in a tropical forest gymnasium, punching, shoving, wrestling, strengthening bonds, and having fun. Or baby seals at a surfside classroom, discovering their world and learning the skills they'll need for survival. Marvelous baby animals, full of surprises. And such a joy and delight to watch. There is so much to discover about their young lives, the amazing things they do, their families and the places they call home, all part of our never-ending fascination with the wonder of baby animals. Our search for exciting, playful, often astonishing images of baby animals in the Roko Mountain Nature Preserve in Japan, where we catch up with high-spirited, extended family of Japanese wild boars. Mums and their piglets romp through the forest. The piglets, about three weeks old, stay close to their own mother, who watches over them and fiercely protects them from forest predators. After all that exercise, it's time for a little nourishment. A portable liquid meal provided by mother, who sometimes lies down on the job, forcing her young ones to work a little harder. Each piglet has his own special nipple or source of rich milk and will defend that small territory. At this tender age, it's important to be aggressive, or at least assertive, to make sure that you get enough to eat. Small, weaker piglets grow more slowly and may have trouble surviving. They're off again heading for a steep, sandy incline nearby, where one of the mothers will conduct a crash course in hill climbing. Her technique is to stand at the top and encourage her offspring to join her there, if they can. A formidable challenge. This little piglet seems to have had enough for one day. So, mother comes down, gathers her clan around her, and sets off again, joining another mum and her clan down by the riverside. On a hot afternoon, the mothers like to take mud baths, wallowing in wet puddles, staying cool and getting rid of ticks and other insects. The piglets slop around in the mud nearby, but don't get near the bath itself until one of the mothers moves on. All finished? Well, not quite. For a really stubborn itch, a sharp rock may do the trick. This piglet does an impressive imitation of an adult scratching an itch. Soon, everyone gets into the act.
sometimes two of the mums do a little territorial sparring just to keep in practice, while the piglets, learning through observation, exercise their own developing skills. When things get rowdy, Mother may stick her nose in, possibly to encourage a less aggressive family member to take a more active part in roughhouse play. As young adults, they will eat mostly grasses, roots, and other vegetation, and will have to defend feeding territories. Far too young to mate, the piglets mimic adult domination rituals possibly to establish rank among their siblings. But much of the day is spent feeding, resting, or just running around, having a good time. Beginning in late May or early June, close to one million northern fur seals come ashore to breed on the Pribilof Islands in the Bering Sea, off the southwest coast of Alaska. The huge males arrive first, then the smaller females, around mid-June. Within a few days, baby seals begin to appear in giant harems on the crowded beaches. Mothers and offspring keep in contact by scent and sound, a necessity, especially at feeding time, in this jam-packed, often rowdy, seaside community. There is a lot of aggression displayed by the adults as they approach breeding time. If the young ones are in the way, they can get shoved aside, trampled on, or seriously injured. For protection, they form their own gangs, or pods, and seek out safer areas where they practice imitating their elders. This female, who probably arrived on the beach only yesterday, is about to give birth. The fetal sac is broken, but must be free of the baby seal's face, nose, and mouth for it to breathe. Mother's seemingly violent actions are not unlike spanking a newborn to help it make that first healthy cry. Mother is also positioning the pup so that it will quickly find the milk source and begin to suckle within minutes of birth. A little later, she does some housekeeping, disposing of the placenta by tossing it away. A neighbor, a female arctic fox, shows interest in the seal's activities and approaches with caution then moves directly to the discarded afterbirth. The fur seal placenta is a favorite seasonal food for the arctic fox, a part-time scavenger. But we soon see that the food is not for the fox, but for her pups, who have been awaiting her return. Two siblings fighting over their dinner are soon joined by a third member of the family, and a full-scale tug-of-war breaks out. Eventually, five baby foxes share the bounty. Living in the rainforest of the Virunga mountain region of Rwanda, in equatorial Africa, are about 200 of the largest and most robust primates on Earth small tribes of mountain gorillas. The same gorillas Diane Fossey lived with, studied, and tried to protect, whose young are among the most playful, intelligent, and photogenic of all baby animals. 
a mature female produces only one offspring every four years. The young suckle until at least their first birthday, but start feeding on forest vegetation at about two months. Mountain gorillas live mostly on the ground, sleeping in crude nests and foraging for leaves, vines, fruits, roots, and wild celery, often ripping and tearing to get at the best pieces. They rise at six, breakfast for two hours, and then rest until about two in the afternoon. Not a bad life, except for the tourists, scientists, and photographers. A celebrity's life is not always an easy one. For animals that have been described as among the shyest and gentlest of jungle creatures, they seem to thrive on body contact, wrestling, touching, hugging, and tugging at each other. It's great exercise, but also strong bonding. The family that plays together, well, you know how it goes. fun-loving youngster that didn't like to spin around like a top until dizzy and then collapse in a heap? As a family, they know how to communicate their feelings to one another with their sophisticated vocabulary of grunts, groans, and calls. And when in the mood, show some of the tenderest, most caring displays of affection. This little fellow can't seem to get enough of a good thing. Baby mountain gorillas actually develop rather slowly, more like human children. Females mature at about seven years, males at ten. This tiny young one has a long way to go and relies on a gentle but firm helping hand. A quick mouthful of jungle salad, and it's up and away for an afternoon walk in the rainforest. Halfway around the world, we find another African native species, the cattle egret, a beautiful small heron nesting in a marsh rookery in South Dakota brooding its baby chicks in a nest of sticks and twigs. The young hatch over a two-week period in May and June. That's why some chicks are bigger and stronger than others. There are three in this nest, and they will compete for food. Both parents attend the babies, and nest exchanges are routine. The three little chicks with their punk hairdos make frequent attempts to establish some kind of pecking order. A parent arrives with a fresh supply of food. The babies are fed heron style by regurgitation into the nest. More aggressive siblings try to encourage a parent to cough up that 
partly digested egret stew. But service can be slow, so you just wait. This looks like something quite large, possibly a frog or small mammal. It may be too big for the tiny birds. But no, down it goes. The next offering, however, is sent back for further digestion. A chick preens, a shaggy, vulnerable, but rather attractive little egret. Cattle egrets got that name from their habit of following cattle, horses and swine, and feeding on insects stirred up from the animal's hooves. Here we find them wading through the marsh, feeding on aquatic life. Then back to the nest and their hungry brood. Dinner will be ready almost any time now. Just don't get impatient. This tiny chick appears to eat almost anything, even the nest. The young birds will leave the nest after about 20 days. When 40 days old, they will fly short distances. So they must feed often to grow strong and healthy. tear the food apart into smaller pieces. If all else fails, back it goes to let the digestive juices work their magic. Cattle egrets first appeared in North America in Florida in the 1940s. They're fairly common now throughout their range one of the most successful and attractive alien species. Now back to Africa and the semi-arid Serengeti savanna, to a small treed oasis that provides cover and shade in the heat of the noonday sun. Here we will spend a few intimate moments with the fastest animal in the world, the sleek and slender cheetah, the greyhound of cats with a mother and her two young cheetahs lying around, resting, taking it easy. They're almost invisible to the naked eye with their distinctive black spots, their natural camouflage. These handsome cats keep up appearances by mutual preening. The face of a pussycat, but the jaws of a hunter. The young cheetahs appear loving, caring, almost affectionate as they preen. But those are human emotions. We may presume too much. They are different from all other large cats, but when preening they may resemble our small domestic cats or when they're playing with a piece of wood as if it was something alive. Experts tell us that cheetahs are actually timid creatures, except of course when attacking prey or defending themselves. This frisky youngster seems to be fighting with its own foot, but then again it may be just another variation of that popular pastime preening. A 
laid-back visit with a mother cheetah and her young on the plains of the Serengeti. The high plains of Mongolia look barren and deserted, but herdsmen with sheep, goats, and cattle cross these plains, so it is no surprise to find wolves here, living in secluded dens, in rock crevices, in packs and extended families, mothers, fathers, cubs, and yearlings, engaging in rough play, sparring and crawling over each other. But on the open plains, parents hunt and give lessons to younger members of the family. Serious instruction often gives way to spontaneous exercise, like a lively chase. A tiny creature of the plains, a Siberian marmot, is alerted by the vigorous activity in its neighborhood. The marmot decides that it would rather be somewhere else right now and heads for home. The wolves spot their prey and chase it on. The marmot is an even faster runner than the wolves and escapes to safety. An unsuccessful venture for the wolves, but it's all part of sharpening one's hunting skills and a good romp as well. It's a great place for a cub to grow up here on the remote Mongolian plains wild and free, with devoted parents to watch over you. In a marsh in rural Ontario, a female blue-winged teal takes her brood of chicks, baby ducks, for a swim around the pond. Mother has been raising and protecting them on her own. Father, the more colorful duck, took off for parts unknown just after incubation. The ducklings are a few days old. Brightly colored baby coots have one or the other or both parents around to protect them and show them how to feed on aquatic vegetation, insects, and small fish. They are bold and hardy little water birds who can swim one hour after hatching. A young muskrat is a year-round resident of the marsh that also feeds in the aquatic garden, chomping away at rushes, water lily stalks, and cattails. Small painted turtles like to sunbathe on half-submerged logs and branches. The busy little muskrat demonstrates impressive feeding skills. Stately Canada geese, two parents and their tiny, furry, ten-day-old goslings, are on a feeding expedition of their own. The baby geese seem to be learning their lessons rather well. Tipping up, flapping their undeveloped wings and being quite vocal about it, just like the old folks. The geese, who usually nest on land near water, also forage here. The muskrats believe they also have a claim to this territory. The Canada geese parents are like sentinels guarding their feeding flock, prepared to defend family and territory from hungry little muskrats or any other creatures that may cross that invisible line. Thank <laughs> you. 
in the shimmering early morning light, we get a stunning glimpse of an almost extinct creature of the North American wetlands, the gorgeous trumpeter swan. Two parents and their baby swans, called cygnets, feeding in a secluded corner of the marsh. After exploring the depths of the shallow pond, a parent kicks up the bottom. Young members of the family crowd around, ready to take advantage of anything that floats to the surface. Baby swans at sunrise on an idyllic Ontario marsh. On the remote Kamchatka Peninsula in far east Russia, in forests near volcanic mountain rivers flowing to the sea, we discover what is possibly the last refuge of the mighty Russian brown bear. It's spring on the mountain slopes, and two four-month-old cubs are foraging with their mother. They were born in early winter, during hibernation, and have grown quickly. Brown bears eat almost any vegetation, leaves, roots, mushrooms, and fruits. Winter conditions remain on some of the higher elevations where bear cubs can scamper around in the deep snow. They join mother who has been waiting for them nearby, and the three bears continue on up the icy slopes. Mother stops for a moment to rest. After a short wrestling match, one of the cubs tries his version of a downhill slalom without skis. Two months later, and midsummer, many of the brown bears have followed the rivers down to the Pacific Ocean in anticipation of the return of the spawning salmon. These cubs, left to fend for themselves while mother goes fishing, scavenge around the estuary at low tide with meager results. Mother has had a lot of practice stalking the salmon. She knows where to find them. This huge male brown bear standing almost three meters high is also hunting for salmon, but farther upstream. He thrashes around in a most impressive manner, but comes up empty-handed. A cub walks down to the shore to see how well mother is doing in the brown bear salmon derby. Very well, thank you. The cub and its sibling follow mother inland to feed on the catch of the day.
Flying over Israel on their annual migration route from Africa to their summer resting grounds in Eastern Europe are giant white pelicans, about 70,000 of them. They'll stop over here for about two weeks to rest and refuel for the last leg of their journey. They fly in and congregate on small desert wetlands and irrigation ponds. Eventually, the white pelicans arrive in Romania at the delta of the Danube River, the largest pelican breeding habitat in Europe. About a month later, white pelican chicks begin to appear on the nest. Rubbery, featherless, awkward, and drab little creatures at first, completely dependent on their parents. They flutter their tiny pouches to keep cool. During the day, the parents fly to other locations to feed often long distances. They're strong, graceful flyers, and almost any landing is spectacular. They fish in teams, circling schools of fish, herding them into tight masses, tipping up and plunging their bills beneath the surface, scooping up the fish in their net-like pouches, and swallowing them whole. Then it's back to the colony. Some of the baby pelicans are much bigger now and more aggressive, especially at feeding sessions. The young plunge their heads into the parents' gullets to stimulate regurgitation. When a parent has had enough stimulation, it just shakes its head. Not a bad imitation of flight. It won't be long now, only a few weeks more. As the day ends at our Romanian waterfowl refuge, a flotilla of white pelicans pass in review. By midsummer, frisky baby bison, born in early spring, accompany adults and yearlings on daily grazing expeditions and take advantage of any opportunity for a little healthy outdoor exercise. Once mighty buffalo herds that roam freely over the vast prairie grasslands of North America are found now mostly in loose, smaller groups and in government refuges and private ranches. In protected habitats such as Custer State Park in South Dakota, and Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming. An adult buffalo can outrun a team of horses, and the young bison athletes are already in training. And as the rut season approaches, they begin to mimic adult ritual behavior. It looks as if unofficial trials are underway for the Buffalo Herd Sprinting Team. On a hot summer day, even the most energetic baby bison has to stop to rest sometime. At the edge of a clearing in the woodlands of northern Scandinavia, a male great gray owl waits silently for sights and sounds from the forest floor, prey to capture and take back to the nest, to feed his hungry chicks. Like for his size, with large wings, this powerful raptor seems to move almost effortlessly through the trees. He and his mate have either built this nest high in the trees or taken over an abandoned hawk's nest. 
The female broods her tiny nestlings for about two weeks. She tears the food apart and feeds it to her baby owlets. First to eat is the oldest and strongest. Father is kept busy. He'll need to bring back a fresh meal every hour. Unlike most owls, he also hunts by day. To grow strong, each chick will need three to four rodents every 24 hours. Tough, furry skin often poses a problem for the tiny chicks. Mother may try to skin the prey first and feed them only the more tender parts. It's several days later. The baby owls are a little bigger and more aggressive. And from what we can see, waiting eagerly for their next meal. At this age, no skinning of the prey is necessary. Down it goes in one gulp. Several weeks have passed, but father must still provide all family dinners, among other duties. Two of the young owlets, now about two months old, have recently fledged. The one remaining with mother on the nest is trying to build up its courage for that leap into young adulthood. One sibling who landed on the ground after a very short test flight has started to climb back up to the nest where it's a little safer and more comfortable. Father offers encouragement. Uh-oh. Well, he'll just have to start all over again. As for the other fledgling, She's made it to a higher branch, but is running out of steam and needs a fast food fix. That's all it takes. She's off and flying. now for a short and lively visit to the grasslands of Alberta and an energetic family of baby foxes, rare northern swift foxes, and their watchful parents enjoying the summer sunrise and also looking for something to eat on the site of what looks like a prairie dog town. Born underground themselves and largely nocturnal, these smallest of North American foxes are fine sprinters and jumpers and fond of the chase. Play becomes more competitive when one of them snares a large piece of something edible. A spontaneous demonstration of swift fox wrestling may be both playful hijinks and training for future competition. This, however, is more serious training for the hunt. 
and the baby foxes give it their best shot. This young fox has the technique almost mastered. Approach, stop, listen. Then leap suddenly. Everyone, it seems, is practicing the swift fox leap. Two siblings wrestle over a small territory, the entrance to a potentially rewarding prairie dog den. We better call that fight a draw. Madagascar is an island in the Indian Ocean off the east coast of Africa. And it is the only place in the world where you can find all 24 species of the rare and endangered lemur, a dog-sized primate only distantly related to the monkey. One of the most interesting lemurs is the ring-tailed species. About 1,000 of them live in a nature preserve in the remote southern region of the island. It's mid-September, and new arrivals are observed in the forest nursery. Baby ring-tailed lemurs clinging to their mothers and aunts. It's also mating season, so the fathers are around. But essentially, this is a cooperative, matriarchal society in which all the mothers are responsible for the feeding, grooming, and raising of the entire younger population. Although ring-tailed lemurs spend more time on the ground than any other lemurs, they are among the most spectacular and amusing of forest gymnasts. They feed on insects, flowers, leaves, nuts, and berries. Unlike monkeys, they have expressionless, mask-like features. They've been called the poker face clowns of Madagascar. But when observed balancing in the treetops, they look more like fearless, high-wire circus performers. Holding on precariously to its mother's chest, this tiny, one-week-old lemur enjoys an all-liquid meal while mum bends and stretches to get at the leaves and nuts. On an even higher level of the canopy, another female and her young pause briefly before making a fast and smooth descent to the forest floor. Where another lively acrobat is waiting in the wings. This mother from down the road may have wandered into a foreign neighborhood. At least something doesn't smell right. Ring-tailed lemurs leave scent trails everywhere, often using their long, striped tails as fans to spread their distinctive territorial aromas. It's getting late in the day, but some of the lemurs haven't lost any of their energy. Slowly, they begin to congregate to make preparations to move on, to return home to their sleeping nests before dark. For the young, it will be an easy, comfortable ride. A straggler runs to catch up to join the colorful evening parade of the ring-tailed lemurs of Madagascar. In the Pacific Ocean off Cape Aramo, on the Japanese island of Hokkaido, about 400 Kuril harbor seals 
some as big as sumo wrestlers, live year-round, and in May come ashore on the rocks beneath the cliffs, and when the tide goes out, give birth to their pups. By the time the tide comes back in, the baby seals are at the water's edge, about to get their first swimming lesson. It's pretty much a matter of sink or swim, except that mother is there, assisting and encouraging her brave young pup. In almost no time, the baby seals seem quite at home underwater. And obviously curious about the strange looking objects with one eye in the center of its forehead, an underwater remote controlled camera. One amazing little pup tries an upside down approach. A technique soon learned is how to rest or sleep on one's back just beneath the surface. A pup on an exploring adventure gets wedged between two rocks, but manages to free itself. but can't resist a passing glance into the camera lens. At times, wild storms pound the shores of Cape Eremo, and the Kuril harbor seals are in danger of being smashed against the rocks, injured or killed. A baby seal has been swept into the raging sea, its mother, concerned for its survival, remains at its side, encouraging it to climb the slippery rocks to safety. Exhausted, clinging to the rocks, they have only a short distance to go. The tiny pup makes one last effort to reach safety and succeeds. A few days later, the storm has passed. The waters off Cape Eremo are calm and the Kuril harbor seals are back swimming again. The mother and her baby are floating along relaxing, touching, communicating in their own private way. How astonishing they are, these incredible baby animals. Mysterious, intelligent, playful, full of surprises, really quite wonderful.